hey, 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 guys, I got my copy of Injustice 2. It is amazing. I might, uh, so review in progress. <gasps> it's good. <laughs> uh, buy it already. But uh, uh, so I wanted to share a quick video with you guys while I work on this review. Uh, what I was doing in Sweden, one of the games that I saw is coming out tomorrow. And it is freaking awesome. Steel Division, Normandy 44, is a sort of World War II strategy game that blew my mind. I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to buy it, and I might possibly do some videos on it because I had so much fun. Uh, so this video is a, a tournament, a competition between me and a few other really well-known personalities. You got Yogscast, you got Quill, you got Sips, Solar Gaming, a few other people that are kind of known in, in, in a strategy circle and known just uh, in general. Uh, so it's really, really fun. The game is made by the previous creators of Ruse, if you remember that Modern Warfare game uh, uh, that, that you would play cards and stuff, uh, but they've taken everything they've learned from that and injected it into this game, and it really gives you that sense that you are a battlefield commander, just one cog in the greater uh, war of World War II. And I am on the Germans, the German team versus the American team. So uh, we'll have to see who wins. I'll let you watch the video and see me and Quill actually go up against each other head to head we're on that side of the map i've been waiting to fight this guy and something for a long time so uh check out what happens uh and i hope you guys enjoy the video while i work on uh the reviews all right i'll see you guys on the next angry joshua all right guys enjoy i'm right here in the sunny nazi germany with the first team the jolly germans named by me first out oh. our first player on the axis side Right here, the solar gamer, Ryan. Tell us, do you have a strategy for, uh, for your battle? Uh, no, I don't. You do not? Nope, but maybe... Uh, so, after I don't know, we'll get an early push. You about the map, because they haven't Sounds seen reasonable. Yeah. Sounds reasonable, sure. I said. Moving on, our next jolly German is our dear Marbizier. Hi. Do you have more of a tactic? Uh, it's a military secret. I can't say anything about that. <laughs> The Germans, they're sneaky like that. I'm sorry to any German viewers, you're not really that sneaky. Either way, last but not least, the jolliest of the Germans, Mr. Angry Joe. Tell us what you're gonna do. Uns de fliegen, uns de fliegen, uns de stinkenheimer. I guess that sounds reasonable, considering the situation. Someone is waving. Okay. We're moving over here to the Anxious Allies, also a team named by myself. First out, you recognize him from the re very recent City Skyline Screams, it's the very Sips. Tell us what your strategy is for defeating the Jolly Germans. My strategy for defeating, defeating the Jolly Germans is to be carried by Quill, who knows how to play this game, uh, because I don't. So let's do it, guys. So it sounds like one of those sacrificial tactics where you give yourself up for the greater good. I like it. Over here, we have Mr. Berian Flax, what's up? I've got a sore throat. That's my main strap, go in with the sore throat strap, and catch him unawares. You sound very like Warthorn then, so they know that you mean business. I've been shouting orders all morning, getting my battle group ready, but mainly just listen to Quill and our coach. That sounds very reasonable. We'll skip Peter, because he's a producer, and no one cares about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peter. And last but not least, we have the most anxious of the allies, the Quill. Yeah, I have to say I'm really terrified because my experience that's going to lead our team to victory means playing two games. So anxiety is about right. There we go. There we have it, folks. That's it for our teams. And I guess we'll hit it back in the studio. And I'll be back with you later after the fact. Oh, yeah. and we have rollout. Oh, so now they are moving. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Die coach, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, Quill is is setting setting. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see how well uh, this uh, uh, goes. <laughs> I like that Sips is more cheerful, uh, just going hey hey, the traditional uh, Swedish uh, over enthusiastic greeting that we tend to say to each other uh, quite a lot. Uh, let's see, so the. Uh, Rollout is still happening, and we can see here on the uh, on the left for Quill. Uh, he's actually moving forward and pushing out. Uh, there does not seem to be 
any resistance here in the uh, in the town, in the uh, fielded area, and it seems like uh, Quill is actually for with some of his units rolling past it. It seems like he's unloading here uh, now. So but it's grabbing a lot of land. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, on the other side, I think Hungry Joe is deploying. He has. Uh, this is a very interesting vehicle for phase A. Um, and he should deploy his uh, AT gun. Probably will try to deploy it here, mm -hmm. which should be like a very good move because you got some good range. Uh, they should be, uh, you know, like, okay, so th that's exactly what he did. So it's interesting. He's got this uh, Pack 38. Yeah. Good thing, like, block, it will be easy probably to block the enemy. And I think uh, Hungry Joe will, will try to stay on defense for the beginning. And uh, they have 50-50% of the territory right now. So uh, Quill has to uh, try to enforce yeah. and take more risk. So what do we have? So we have some unit firing. Yeah, we can, we can see from the Allies side that Quill's front uh, um, get uh, recon spot? unit here, or scout, can actually see some of Angry Joe's uh, scout units as well, the Puma and the uh, SPW, uh, as well as the SKK. Uh, well, he can see a lot of things. Uh, he did manage to get his HGM 5A1 in cover while it was being stressed and is now with his uh, mor uh, mortar actually pushing back uh, that one of those um, uh, recon units. We'll see how's it, what's happening over in the uh, woods. The allies so far haven't actually seen anything, yeah. which is hardly surprising. Uh, what's going on on the Axis side? So they are, in fact, they are. Uh, so they are using, you know, like defensive uh, positions. So they probably like they are waiting for each other's. Yeah. And I think as they are playing on the German side, they will say, "We don't have the phase A for us, so yeah. we have to stand still." Okay, so we have some start fighting with uh, uh, attack from Quill, and uh, but it's not decided to yet to uh, uh, use oh. his uh, vehicle and try, you know, like to. Uh, Push. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, a pretty big explosion early on, removing some of the uh, well, some of the actual uh, wooded area or the yeah. edge row. And there are some uh, fires here, so uh, probably which is the unit that has fired? Uh, well, I I know that Quill is firing back with his uh, Mortia eight. I'm I'm bad at all languages except English and Swedish. <laughs> it's like Mudja and then 81. That doesn't know. That doesn't make any sense. Um, and it seems like Quill has actually uh, secured his position quite well here. But unfortunately, uh, Sips and Perium Flax have not managed to push forward as well, which means that. Uh, they're actually, uh, well, I was going to say they're still at a stalemate, but the Axis have managed to get that elusive 51%. Right, right. So they're actually ticking up right now. Exactly. Um, it's, if uh, if uh, Perion and Sips can actually push back here, I think this is going to be less of an issue. This is definitely still recoverable, but it's, you know, it's always nice when you get that first tick. Yes. Uh, when you're like, okay, we're actually, we're, we're getting some points. And it... Are we seeing part of a someone trying to circle around Quill here? We can see that from my perspective. We can see that the front line is pushing yeah. in. So yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Let's go over to Alexis and see what's actually going so, on. Uh, what's there? But on the German side, probably it means that there is no one here. That's yeah. why it should be good to move. So we have finally an attack from uh, Quill, who is trying to shoot down as uh, at Hungry Joe and. Uh, what is his name again? Marbezier unit. Marbezier unit is using, uh, you know, Ostruppen, which are really yeah. low hand soldier from and the I beginning. Think, I think he's actually fighting a, a against Sips here in the middle, uh, because Sips just pinned down one of the uh, Fusilier Marbezier units, uh, and that unit is gone. So uh, Sips first engagement, uh, he's victorious. Uh, that said, Angry Joe has some pinned down units as well on his side. What can you tell me about that, Alexis? Uh, I think it's not a, a big uh, a big problem because he has his uh, pack that mm -hmm. is shooting at his vehicle and, st and so on. So uh, probably Quill is losing uh, like interesting unit that will be uh, needed, you know, in phase B and C. So actually, yeah. I would say um, 
it, it, uh, that uh, Quill has to take more risk and mm -hmm. push this uh, position, but it seems that he's quite alone. Just yeah, he's he, he has he has gotten some uh, reinforcements uh, here that are slowly but surely coming in and getting uh, un unloaded on his side. But there are a lot of machine guns. There's the actually uh, Marbus here is actually helping Angry Joe here. Yeah, with so, so he's fighting on two against one. Yeah, so. But of course, Angry Joe has a lot of oh. uh, Ostropan and they are getting pinned down. Um, so Equal is at least pushing back, and it's actually back to 50-50 now. And I think that's also partly because Sips has managed to push back in the middle, but it seems like the main engagement, as we kind of predicted, is happening on the open side of the map. Yes. And on the other side, they really, uh, you know, like, lowing down, not moving. Uh, and uh, that's why I think it's... Uh, uh, Marbuzier did a good move, like putting a lot of his units on his uh, right. Yeah. Uh, no, I think we're gonna be in phase B in less than three minutes. So, uh, and the the German they are the are uh, you know like controlling the terrain in a good way. And I think even Quill has some uh, difficulties to hand up, even if he's got a lot of good units. Yeah. He's got a lot of very experienced units as well. If we, if uh, from my perspective, of course, I can see that most of these have at least one star on them. Um, we have. He actually has a recon unit here, uh, quite be at this point behind the enemy lines. So he's seeing a lot of units. Yeah. Uh, which is great for him. Unfortunately, it's units that are pushing into his position, and uh, some of the his Bufosh and his AMM20 are. Well, they're kind of stuck where they are. They're pinning. They're pinning down some uh, units, and that's. Uh, let's see who who what who did surrender there. Uh, unfortunately, I can't make it out. And that's the. Um, uh, that is not the Bullforge. That's the uh, AMM20 that's exploded, and the Bullforge as well. Uh, unfortunately, uh, let's see who uh, these are. Yeah. So this is Marbasir and Angry Joe together pushing forward here, and it seems like. Quill is having problems holding uh, the line. He might want. Would you say he should fall back to the to the villages as pointer? Um, I think he's trying to, you know, like move on the uh, take the combat uh, on another. Um, uh, you know, like not trying to push back exactly where they were uh, fighting, but yeah. counter attacking uh, on another uh, point, which is uh, I think intelligent. We also have a push. Of the uh, you know the allied in the in the forest, but in my opinion the forest is heavily defended by uh, Panzer Grenadier, yeah. uh, which I think is going to be difficult for allied. And now we have 53 percent for yeah. uh, the Germans. So, but we, and we are in phase B in yeah. 50 seconds. And we can also see that Sips has actually moved a lot of his uh, units over to, uh, from my perspective, the left hand side here with the Quill to give some uh, yeah. to give some support. And I think that's definitely needed since he's fighting against two players. Um, Let's see, Marbus here also has a Panzer in the woods here. It's kind of hard to tell because Perium Flags in the woods has a lot of really good, like he's got some rifle leaders, he's got, uh, I think he's got Bren groups and more rifles. And basically the woods are crawling with them. Um, but they do, they have found an enemy and it's comparatively when we're out in, in the open, uh, you, you can kind of see the units so far away, yeah. comparatively. And here, they they just appear yeah. next yeah. to each other because no one can see anything. That, that's why I was saying you need to have good infantry that are really good at close combat. And yeah. the best one are the flamethrower. These are the uh, uh, American engineers uh, that are extremely powerful. Um, and uh, on the German side, what we have... Uh, uh, pioneer. Well, he has some pioneer, and uh, yes, uh, need to have some good uh, close range uh, weapon. Solar Gamer actually getting some air support in here, uh, bombing and actually destroying uh, one of Perrin's units here. There's nothing but rubble uh, left. Uh, let's see how, unfortunately, for for the Allied, they are at 53 yeah. currently, uh, which is not where they want to be, but it seems like. Uh, Quill has at least stopped the push on the edge here with an uh, AM81. Oh no! And I think uh, he has a very strong, uh, you know, like his Puma. Yeah. Is very powerful. Uh, 
He has a beautiful cannon. Uh, uh, Angry Joe is using it in a very good way. And we can't imagine that when he's going to be in phase B or C and have some Panther or Koenigsteiger, uh, it can make a lot, a lot of uh, yeah. damage. Because just with this tank having good uh, place at anti-tank, he did a very good job. Oh, here, what we have? We have a Koenigsteiger. <laughs> oh, that... Already in that, phase B. Wow, okay, that <laughs> is early. Now, how, <laughs> how horrible is this for, for Quill and the Allies? Uh, basically, there is, is in, uh, in long range, there is nothing can destroy this vehicle. Yeah. So the only way is having like a super uh, uh, extraordinary um, lucky shot that destroys something on the tank. Otherwise, is you know like massing uh, unit and try to uh, stress him out on the front, which I think would be totally suicidary. Or uh, you know find good ways to shoot the tank on the uh, uh, on the side uh, armor. Because if we have a look at uh, uh, this vehicle, we have only nine uh, on the side and on the and on the back. But I say to Hungry Joe try to have your tank always facing the enemy yeah. and you will be invulnerable. And I think that they're doing a really good job here. Uh, Thip coming coming back here uh, has helped a bit, but of course, and this is, this is one of the things that are so hard, at least for me when I'm playing to grasp, but that you kind of have to do is that when someone pushes really hard, you kind of, you have to fall back, regroup. You can't be, you can't be stubborn with uh, with the territory, you have to be like, okay, I'm letting go now because my units are more important alive than I can come back yes. uh, the, later. And the thing is, if you don't do this, it means that you're gonna suffer so many losses, and that you will not be able to regroup enough force to do, uh, you know, yeah. like a big con uh, counter push. And we we can see that at least from my perspective, uh, the Axis has some really good intel here and doing long range uh, artillery pushes to push back uh, Summerquill's unit at yeah. the front. The uh, M5A1 uh, is all stressed out and moving moving back. And that's, of course, a pretty important unit in that it's got two stars. In the middle, though, it seems to get be a bit better. Uh, Sibs is pushing forward and has, has actually gotten a bit of a foothold. And if they can push hard here, yeah. this might very well counter some of the um, some of the push on the le uh, on the uh, side flank here. Um, yes, exactly. They should uh, they should try you really know, to destroy, and they can do. Uh, on my point of view, they they don't have any uh, uh, you know unit here to yeah. control the wood, which means that if they have this info or uh, have the intuition, they could make a very interesting push and even cut all the entire uh, mm -hmm. zone and make a lot of points because they. They, yeah, 56 against 44 percent, and we have uh, one Königsteiger that is on his way to do a lot of kills. So uh, no, I think it's the uh, one of the only thing they can do on this uh, on my left side. Here. Yeah, and it's going to be difficult. So now, as you can see, there isn't any unit, and they are. Um, will be taking a lot of territory. Yeah, and we hopefully we can see the uh, graph change here. Yeah, so going from 57 back to 55% for the axis and if they can if they can push even harder here on the uh, on the allied side, they might actually be able to claw back uh, some uh, some of that territory. The Churchill with his um, insane armor uh, probably is a good choice because yeah he's, and, he, uh, he found he, he's found some solar gamer here and solar gamer is forced to forced to fall back now that they realize exactly. that there's any standing troops that have no uh, anti tank weapons so the only chance they have is you know like storming at the tank which means uh, it's absolutely it's gonna be like uh, a massacre uh, so uh, now probably they are gonna. Um, you know, like control the zone here and uh, uh, here they have some problems because they have only artillery. Uh, another one could be good, but very uh, small um, armor. Mm -hmm. So if they push uh, hard, I think they destroy this, uh, all those position. While it's going to take a lot of time for uh, Angry Joe to uh, put reinforcement into the zone because it's far away yeah. from his reinforcement points. Oh, we have here 
some punter that are going into the play. Now, here's a here's a question I've been thinking about. So, Quilt currently has a recon unit that really, it's basically been the whole game where it started in the middle of the map and is now far, far behind uh, Angry Joe's uh, uh -huh. front line. Should he move it somewhere closer or are you like, no, it's it's there, it's far back, I'm, I'm going to keep it here? Uh, honestly, um, if I take a look, uh, I think the, the uh, oh yes, maybe he has some info about the tanks that are coming, uh, the reinforcement, but it has to be put uh, next to like um, yeah, so, uh, so you, reinforcement points. So probably, so would you then try and sneak it closer to some of these some of these areas here? Yes, yes, to be sure that you have the info that you want, uh, because uh, recon units. Yeah. <laughs> in, in case people people haven't noticed, because I don't know how much our mics pick up, but we just had some claps and a very happy uh, angry Joe on the Axis uh, side because he's gotten a lot of use out of his Koenigs Tiger. It came in in phase B and it's still around and it's essentially yeah. pushed through the whole whole map here. We'll see at the end how, you know, like the uh, the kill list of the Koenig Tiger, but I think it's going to be insane. He yeah. really, really put it in the right way. And all the new units that are, uh, that Quills are sending in the game are getting shot. Uh, and I think it is for like, uh, maybe uh, close to five, six, seven, uh, something like yeah. tanks, which is really big. So the center is uh, getting, um, it's more and more into the allied, um, uh, into the yeah. allied, uh... the allies have essentially tried their very best to split the map in in half in the middle uh, by by just pushing forward, realizing that apparently there's not that much defense. <laughs> if I want to see this even out, a very strong push by the Axis now, up to 59 uh, percent. Yeah, so they uh, they will have a total victory in five minutes if they continue with this trend. Mm -hmm. oh, they're really really doing good. And, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> literally, oh, 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 the, hang on, no, the Koenigstanger is not destroyed, but it's falling back, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's totally stressed out. Oh, maybe it's going to be destroyed. Okay, so, Quill has oh. to up here, oh, and the Koenigstanger oh. is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, Angry Joe says he has another one already, but <laughs> that at least. It must feel good when you've had one tank just harassing <laughs> you. Finally, he managed to destroy the tank. Yeah, some some type of a retribution there. That must feel good. Uh, so, uh, congrats to uh, Quill on that one. Now, the uh, Angry Joe has two Panzers in uh, that are that I can see that are hanging out on their own in a bubble. Yeah, here. And uh, the bubble. You know why this bubble is not uh, shrinking down because they are commanding in it. Yeah, they are before uh, Panzer, which means that they cannot be a uh, circle. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably what he could be doing is. Uh, circle uh, 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 silps, uh, yeah. Like uh, uh, because right now, it, um, from what I'm seeing, the ally doesn't have any troops in the middle. No. Uh, so I think they really, really um, uh, well, did a lot of casualties. And all the forces out there, and he has some great, some great tanks. Yeah, this is turning into a battle here on the uh, middle now that... Oh, enemy team owns 80%. Well, that's because I'm the Allied Observer um, that I see that. But it is uh, it is looking grim for the Allies uh, currently. They've held out well, though. Yeah. Uh, because we were like... We were like, is this is this going to go the is this going to go the full forty minutes? We didn't know. But this has been a, this has been a good this has been a good fight uh, so far. Uh, Solo gamer still been able to hold, I think, most of his side and slightly bit more of the woods uh, there. Period. Uh, pushing him back, being a bit of a stalemate, exploding pretty much everything <laughs> in this. There's there there used to be a field here, and now it's a crater of dirt. <laughs> but as I was saying, you know, the, the different tastes you have in this map with mm -hmm. one of the wood, everybody will use infantry, artillery and stuff like that. It's going to be very, uh, uh, this kind of fight, where on the other side we see so many tanks. Uh, and um, oh, also look at look at this here by by Quill. He's actually managed to, if, oh, he, if yes. he can if he can get this uh, encircling here, which 
might happen because but still if if he if he get rid of, rid of these marbus here uh, units that's a transmission damage they've actually reclaimed a huge for considering part of uh, part of the part of the map exactly so and they fall to 56 percent yeah and uh Yes, absolutely. So get, get there's still some fight <laughs> in them. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens here. This is probably oh, and actually getting an, uh, another Befell Panzer to uh, to fall back here. The one that was trying to to encircle uh, Sips earlier. And they are not using recon in a good way. They should, uh, from my point of view, yeah. they don't have any info about how the uh, how the enemy, where the enemy are. So they are moving their tanks, um, you know, like uh, without knowing mm -hmm. uh, what the danger uh, could be. So that's no. why probably they're gonna um, uh, they are losing a lot. And we can see that Quill has a lot of tanks, mm -hmm. anti tanks. Uh, it's trying to recover. And here we have some other ta other chairmen on this way. Uh, what do we have? Oh, we have another Königsteiger. I think this the, he has only two, yeah. maybe three in his deck. And, we, uh, we, we talked about it earlier, and then we said two. So uh, I uh, think I'm so. Gonna, I'm going to assume it's two. Yeah, probably. There's actually quite a large air battle uh, going on, which we we haven't actually commented on. But there's been a lot of planes in the air. Yes. Uh, that's a pioneer that has surrendered. So, so while Quill has been pushing back here, it seems like Marbasir uh, has managed to do the opposite in the middle and actually forced uh, Sips to uh, fall back. Exactly to go backwards. <laughs> so I wonder if that was one of the conceits there that Marbasir realized that okay, so Sips is pushing really hard in the middle. I can't support Agrajo and the push on the the flank as much as I had done previously. So I'm gonna. Back away, regroup, and push forward in the middle to to get these uh, allies uh, out of here. Exact. And also the uh, the thing is, if if you attack, and then your attack is really um, painful, have a lot of casualties, then uh, it's going to take a lot of time for your reinforcement to get there if you are in, uh, very uh, far away from your uh, reinforcement lines. So we have a group of tanks. And uh, like four four Shermans, four Shermans uh, is is something that is difficult even for like those yeah. uh, two uh, big tanks over there. And uh, I'm going to should not have them in the uh, close range. Oh, oh. well, <laughs> and that's and the <laughs> and level up <laughs> and the level up finally. So uh, congratulations to the Axis side with Angry Joe, Marbusier, and Solar Gamer. Let's see if we can find Seek somewhere around here. Alexis is really happy. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's get Seek a a microphone so he can he can actually see how, if they can if they can channel uh, well channel their joy into uh, words. Um, but uh, I have, have you ever seen Pierre Yves that happy? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's very happy. Uh, it's, uh, uh, well, let's see. Whenever you're ready, um, we'll, uh, we'll have you talk to the Axis players. <laughs> <laughs> Angry Joe's pretty pleased about uh, the Koenig's Tiger there, I bet. Um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, Seek is ready, so let's go to uh, the winning team uh, for a winner interview with Seek. Here we are. The sun is shining ever brightly on the fields of Germany. Everyone is <laughs> jollier than ever in the Jolly Germans. First we have here, Ryan, the solar gamer. What are you most proud about? Uh, just keeping the forest, really. Um, I don't know who was on my side. Uh, oh, Pyrian Flax. Okay, yeah. It was difficult, though, you know. Um, yeah, so. straight up. You know what they say, rather a pack in the forest than two in the field or whatever. Yeah, they had to deal with that. That's, I'm not envious of them. <laughs> there we go. We're moving on here to Mr. Marbusier, our second jolly German. How did it go? I had a few really well-positioned recon units that didn't get detected until like way later. And they provided some super important uh, vision on units we kept bombarding with artillery. Sounds very good. My hands are shaking because I'm tired, but that's always going on. But wow, 
You really whooped the floor with those allies, didn't you? I'm quite happy about that. It just shows the superiority of the jolly Germany, obviously. The jolly Germany is the Germany that we all can love and support. Ain't that right, Mr. Joe? Our final jolly German, possibly the jolliest of all still. I feel very good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I killed a lot of quill units. Uh, I, I felt I was real kind of weak at the beginning. That's why we kind of, I asked for his help to, to kind of move my forces and, and support me in the middle on the left flank. And then once we moved into that next phase where I was able to get the king tigers on the <laughs> battlefield and I was just mopping up, just killing tank after tank. You look at my look at my screen. Quill, 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 quill. These are all my kills. <laughs> all your quills, as they call them. Will, will, however, jolly Germany raise a monument to that one Königsteiger that could, but later perished. <laughs> he will be remembered forever. King Tiger. That's very good. After all, because we're all inclusive, we're moving on to the anxious, maybe more than more so than before, allies. Sips, my dear friend, how are you feeling? Pretty salty. Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine. It was, it was good. It was really fun. I think we did okay. Like, we lost, but we did okay. That's the, the spirit of a champion. The, mo the most important thing is that you have fun. Absolutely. That's right. And we had lots of fun losing, right? <laughs> Flags, hey! Yeah, it was good. That yeah, was good. We had, we had a good time. <laughs> There we are, we're moving on to our to second anxious ally, small. Purion Flax. <laughs> How are you feeling? Doing good, that was fun. Um, it was good, the three-way battle, trying to coordinate and trying to figure out which flank and stuff. So yeah, I enjoyed it. I'd definitely play it multiplayer again, definitely, yeah. That's definitely cool. If you were to restart the battle right now, what would you do different? Everything. Just everything. Everything. You heard it here first. And last but not at all least, we have... The final of the Anxious Allies, Mr. Quill himself, how do you feel? Well, I, I, you know, okay-ish. I'm looking at my kill count, or the people who killed me, and it's about 50-50 mostly between Marbazir and Angry Joe. They had a good strategy, a couple of people coming in on the same flank. I look at the, uh, the team score, I got almost exactly the same amount of kills as Angry Joe did as well. So, can't complain too much. We had a great time, great time, but apparently the bad guys are going to win today. Ain't that the truth? And I think what we can conclude from this is everything probably is Peter's fault. Because that's just, you know, without a, without a strong leader, how will you beat those jolly Germans? That's all for me, folks. And back to Anders in the studio. Yeah, so uh, thank you for those uh, winning and losing interviews. Uh, that, that, that was a game, Alexis. Uh, was, that, was that what you expected when we started? Yeah, in fact, like we were saying at the yeah. beginning, like um, regarding the division they have, yeah. uh, it's really using the asset and mm -hmm. the pro versus the cons. So I think uh, Quill is right in terms of kills and losses is very close, you know, 1-1. One, one. Yeah. And they lost all this, uh, you know, the terrain because he... He wasn't. Uh, he didn't use this his division the right way, and didn't totally, uh, you know, like uh, push and mm -hmm. try to destabilize uh, Hungry Joe, with, which has uh, a weaker division in phase A. So, regarding this point, it re it, it happened uh, the way I, uh, I was predicting. Total victory. Who did I kill? Let's see. Quill, 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 quill. <laughs> Look at this one king tiger here. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, yes. We're moving on here to Mr. Marvis here, our second Jolly German. There you go. How did it go? Which is what I like in the game is as the divisions have their own way of playing, still you have a great amount of liberty, freedom, how you can use it, you can predict what the player is going to do in front of you. So you can uh, sort of adapt your tactic. And Hungry Jody played well because he used uh, uh, an interesting defensive position at the beginning, and then when he had the feeling, oh, I can push a little bit more, he destabilized uh, uh, a quill, uh, even if his losses were... Um, uh, you know, like losses and kills are uh, pretty uh, equal. So no, it was really it was really great. I think they played uh, really well. My feeling is when we were 
looking at them, I had the feeling they are playing like good players uh, and they were um, experiencing the game not for so long. Yeah. Is, is right. I, I, I know I, I showed a game to, uh, to Joe, Hungry Joe, uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. I think, and uh, I make discover him the game, and I think it was his third. Uh, game and uh, I think it was playing very well, so yeah. it's uh, really cool. Yeah, no, it's it, it's it's been a great game, and thank you so much for hanging out with us, you guys at home as well. Uh, before we go, I just want to say uh, congratulations to Angry Joe, Marbusier, and uh, the Solar Gamer. Uh, you did great, and of course, uh, Quill, Perian Frank, <laughs> Perian Frank, and Sips, uh, you are free to blame Peter for uh, <laughs> for your losses. That's that's why he's there. That's the producer fault. Uh, yeah, exactly. Always. Exactly. That's why he's there. So so you have someone to blame. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining us for day one of PDXCon. You guys have all been great. Alexis, thank you so much, thank for, you very much. Uh, for saying smart things. <laughs> uh, players, thanks so much. Um, see you tomorrow, everyone. Good night. Bye.